And so our first question is from somebody with the initials AM. So AM, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, hi. Um, I, I just wondered why Bill Gates is uh, so anti-organic. Because he's put his investments into fake food. You know, just like if Monsanto had put all its investment in GMOs and patenting, of course it was going to try and criminalize seed saving, and which is why I started seed saving. So, you know, what Monsanto was in the late 80s and early 90s, Bill Gates is today. But except that Monsanto was selling toxics, had sold Agent Orange, selling Roundup, but also pushing GMOs, Gates wants every bit of our lives, our health, our food, our land, our minds, our knowledge, our governments, our democracies. So of course he won't want organic, which gives freedom for small farmers to grow food without chemicals and without GMO seeds. Thank you. And, and up next, we have Catherine. Catherine, if you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, please, for Vandana Shiva. Hi, Vandana Shiva. I can't even believe I'm getting to talk to you. I'm so happy. I refer to you, listen to you as much as possible. I'm a 65-year-old American that got to go to India in the early 80s on a spiritual pilgrimage with a shaved head. And I'm so angry. I'm so afraid. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm living in a good way and I'm contributing. Sometimes I'm just, you know, all these emotions. How do you deal with that to be so effective? Well, you know, of course I feel outrage. But I don't allow the outrage to turn into dissipative anger or into fear. Yeah. And I'm grateful to have been born to parents who encouraged me to be fearless. Yeah. He said, as long as you live with your conscience, let conscience, your conscience be your compass. And there's nothing to be afraid of. And I've learned watching them and through my lifetime that your conscience has to be your compass. And don't allow your energies to be dissipated. Just figure out what's going wrong and then turn that outrage into creative resistance. So when I was outraged with the patenting of seed, my creative resistance was I'll save the seed and where I can work with laws, which we did. There was a time where you know, we could make international laws and national laws and we did it. And there are times when that closes because the gates are running our government. At that point, you do what you can with community. There are different times where different levels of governance have more openings. And, you know, I'll just cite you two little things. One, it's in the cracks that light comes in. And two, you see, they can keep putting concrete and that the grass comes out. So we have to be the light that comes through the cracks. We have to be the grass that burst past the concrete. Thank you, Vandana. And uh, up next, we have Rachel. Rachel, if you'd go ahead and please unmute yourself. Hello. Nice listening to that. Never heard you before. I'm so happy I tuned in. Um, could you tell me your thoughts on the vaccine and also sugar alternatives? Well, I don't think I got the full question, but I, you know, because I worked on living systems after my work on quantum theory, living systems are interactive systems. Okay? Living systems help each other. And all living systems have immunity and resilience. So if I feed a soil organic, the plant is more resilient to pests. If I use native seeds, they'll never be attacked by pests. So native seeds never get attacked by pests. They're resilient. Resilience and immunity go hand in hand. 
But these are the inner self-organized complex systems of all living organisms. So chemical agriculture was, oh, there's no fertility in the soil because they declare the soil dead. Fertility comes from the nitrogen factories that originally made explosives for Hitler. So they turned it into an external input system. Same system then redefined our bodies and our health, said health is not about being whole and having our immunity. It is about an external input system. Originally, it was drugs patented, and now it is vaccines patented. And you, you've been watching the vaccine wars grow um, every second day. And, and, and just I leave you with two facts. I'm not a doctor. My sister is. She knows much, much more about all of this. And she, in fact, had sued with a group of doctors in India uh, the experiments financed by Bill Gates that had led to the death of children in um, in, I think two cases of vaccination in, in just in the clinical trial stage. So just two sentences. One, Gates has said, and you can Google for this, vaccines is my smartest investment. For $1, I make $200. And yet, uh, I make $20. For one, my $1 becomes 20. And we call him a philanthropist who's giving. Yeah. If someone else got $20, we could call it philanthropy. But if Gates is getting richer by $20, and the second is a lot of new writings on how he is becoming a block to any distribution because he is financing all the patents. See, all of these companies he's created, so many of the companies are, in, are overnight companies and he's financed them. And he's financing the IPRs and he owns the IPRs and he changed the whole system of WHO, which was about fairness and equity into what he calls accelerator. I talked about Gates Aguan accelerator. And he says, time is the enemy, time is the enemy, time is the enemy. I have the right to test anything on anyone in any part of the world. And I have the right to pretend I'm doing it for philanthropy. 